So we're going to demonstrate how to perform a parasitic drain test. So this is a test that you perform whenever you have a battery that continues to die. Um, we're measuring the amount of, of drain or current that's flowing out of the battery when everything should be turned off. At night when you shut the key off and shut all of your doors, everything in the car should be off. But often there are still things that remain on and continue to drain the battery. So to test this, we come to the battery and the first thing we want to do is measure the amount of current flowing out of the battery. But, we'll start by making sure that all the doors are closed. Sometimes it'll be helpful later to get inside of the car, so what we can do here is come and open the, the driver's door and then trick the car into believing that the door is closed. If there's a door jam switch anywhere, we can uh, trip that switch so that it's, it thinks it's closed. In this case, the switch is actually in the latch. And so we can we can trick that door, trick the car into thinking the door is closed by flipping that latch over. Now, as far as the car is concerned, the door is closed. In other cases, you might find a, a switch right over here or a switch up in this area that you just need to make sure is pressed. But but we've got the car assuming the door is closed. We come back to the battery, and now we're going to use our multimeter to measure current. Some people have asked if you can use an amp clamp here. And the answer is usually no. Current probes are not accurate enough for the small amount of current that we're going to be measuring. So what we need to do is, is open up the circuit, disconnect the negative battery cable, and connect the multimeter in series. So any current that's flowing out of the battery has to flow through the multimeter. He's using pliers here because sometimes it's difficult to uh, get your alligator clips on your multimeter to fit around battery terminal. So just using the pliers as a, as a way to connect. So connect one, one lead to the battery terminal is what we've done here, right? And the other lead to the battery cable. Now if there's any current flowing out of the battery into the vehicle, it should show up. Of course when we're measuring current, we need to, we need to come over here and move the red lead. Move it over to the amp setting. The reason we want to go to the, yep, yeah, and we set it on amps here. And on the amp setting, you usually have two options. We have amps or milliamps. I would recommend that you always use the amp setting. It's got it's fused at 10 amps on this meter. Some meters it's 20 amps. Use that setting because we don't know how much this is, but it's less than 10 amps, I'm sure. If we go here, we have a, a high probability of blowing the fuse. It's only fused at about uh, half of an amp, or in this case, it says 400 milliamps. So, so don't use the setting, use the amp setting. We've got the set of amps. It's telling us right now we have 2.5 amps. That's a lot. The rule of thumb is that it should be 30 milliamps or less. Basically, if you, want to, if you want to know why, if you have one amp flowing out of a battery, your battery will last about 24 hours before it won't start the car anymore. So you can see at this rate, now we're at 3 amps, two and a half. At this rate, it won't even last two or three hours. Just a, just a fraction of a day. So, we sit here and we watch this. Now, you can see that going down. What's happening is the computers on the car are going to sleep. We woke them all up when we opened the door a minute ago or when we reconnected the battery. You could use a memory saver here when you disconnect the battery if you want to. So you don't use memory, lose the memory in the vehicle. But you've got to make sure that the memory saver is removed from the car before you take this measurement. Otherwise, you could have two sources of current flowing into the car, and this measurement isn't accurate. So now we're down to 250 milliamps. That's better, but that's still about 10 times more than we'd like it to be. We'd like it to be 30 milliamps or less, which is 0 0.030 amps. So... You should let this sit for about 30 minutes and allow all the computers to time out. It may take less time than that, but uh, if it does take that long, you need to make sure that everything has a chance to go to sleep before you take this measurement. You also might look around to see if there are other things. You know, just, just take a glance around the car. Do you see a glove box that's left open? Do you see, do you see a light on in the trunk? Maybe a, a dash light or a dome light that's left on? Make sure all those things are turned off. And look for a, a switch like this. This has a, a hood switch. And so we need to unplug or disable that somehow. We don't want the car to think that the hood is open. 
and we'll make sure there are no hood lights underneath the hood so nothing is on. And oh, it looks like by pushing that hood switch we caused it to wake up again, so we'll wait for a little bit. And we'll watch this and see where it ends up. Okay, we're back. It's been 30 minutes. We've still got a pretty significant parasitic drain. So this is the first step of the parasitic drain test is to measure how much current is draining from the battery and to see if it's uh, more or less than the than the minimum, which is or the maximum, I'm sorry, which is 30 milliamps. Once we've determined we do have a drain, now we need to isolate where that drain is and narrow it down. The easiest way to do this is to go to the fuse box. There are two fuse boxes on most cars. This one has one fuse box here by the battery, has another fuse box in underneath of the, the dash. That's why we opened the door before we started and, and tripped the door switch. In the olden days, we used to come to the fuse box and start pulling out fuses to see which one would make the, go, the drain go away. But we have so many computers on board now that all that does is cause additional problems. It'll cause computers to wake up, it'll cause things to shut down, and it'll, uh, it'll leave us confused. So rather than pulling any fuses, we should be stealthy about this. We don't want the car to know we're here. But here's the secret. If there is current flowing out of this battery and flowing through one of these fuses, we'll have slight voltage drop across the back of the fuse. We've got two little terminals on the back of each fuse. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get, uh, we have another meter here. You could use the same meter if you wanted to pull it out of your, your circuit, but we have another meter. We've got it set on volts, and actually let's turn it to millivolts. We're going to be looking for even a fraction of a millivolt being dropped across each fuse. So now we'll come over and one, one fuse at a time. You hold it on there just long enough to see if it goes to zero, and it should go to 0, 0.000. Hold those leads steady. When they go to zero, that means there is no current flowing. and Those fuses are not part of the problem. Again, just to reiterate while he's performing this test, there are two steps to this. The first step is to measure current flowing out of the battery. The second step is if there is a parasitic drain, to go and measure individual fuses. And we're measuring the voltage rather than the current here. We're measuring the voltage dropped across each fuse. Okay, so now we're, we're measuring one of these fuses, and what we see is he's measuring the, across the back of that fuse is there is a little bit of voltage drop. In fact, it says here that we have, I can get that. It says here that we have about two to three millivolts. It's varying a little bit. Whatever that, uh, that drain is, it's changing, and that's from one side of the fuse to the other side of the fuse right here. Again, that should be zero, but if you're measuring something, it's because there is current flowing through that fuse. So the next step is to figure out what fuse that is, go to the wiring diagram, and find out, for example, if that's, say, uh, a fuse that leads to the radio, we'd want to get the diagram for that and find out how to, to narrow that down. We want to continue to check fuses, too. We may find that there are other, other fuses that have drains as well. But anything besides 0.0, .0 when you're measuring this voltage drop, is something that we should be concerned about. Anyway, that's how you narrow this down. That's how, you, that's how you measure voltage drop, and that's how you determine which circuit has... I'm sorry, that's how you measure a parasitic drain, and that's how you determine which circuit has the drain in it, is by performing those steps. Now, one last thing. When it comes to connecting, connecting your multimeter, again, there's nothing complicated here. We've connected connected the multimeter so that it's in series. We just disconnected the battery. The multimeter is in series with the, the battery terminal, so all the current flowing out of the battery has to go through the multimeter, and we read it over here. It's, it's changing. Again, we've, we've just uh, opened the door. It's changing. But there is a tool that makes this easier. We've got this parasitic drain tool, and all it is is a battery shutoff switch. You open and close the switch by turning that knob. It's 
go ahead and hook it up and show it how it, how it does connects here. So this parasitic drain tool just goes onto the battery post like this. All it is is a battery shutoff switch that somebody has adapted into a, a, a tool to make this easier. And then we connect the battery cable. So this is an option. This isn't required, but this, this tool is made for to make measuring parasitic drain easier. All it is is a battery shutoff switch that someone has adapted for this purpose. They've put a, a battery terminal, a battery post on one end, and so it connects onto the battery cable, and then it fits over onto the battery terminal on this end. And it has two small pins that are used so that you can connect your alligator clips of your multimeter. One on this side that's connected to the battery terminal, and then one on the, on the back side down there. There's a pin right down there. It connects onto it. And once we have our, our leads on there, now we, now we have the current flowing directly through this. Well, this closes. The current flows through the tool when this is closed. And when I open it, when I open that switch like this, current now has to flow through the multimeter, and we'd read it on the multimeter screen. So it's just another way of doing it. It makes it a little bit easier. So the first thing we need to do is disconnect the negative battery cable. It's been loosened. Remove it. With that disconnected, now we need to hook the meter up in series with that. So we're basically reconnecting the battery to the cable with our multimeter. So we hook, hook an alligator clip onto the cable and hook the other lead onto the terminal. However, it's pretty difficult to get that to clip on there. Um, so here's an idea if you, if you can't get your clip to fit onto the battery terminal. Grab a pair of pliers, locking pliers like these here. Clamp that down onto the terminal, and that gives us something else that we can clamp onto that will make this easier. By clipping onto that, it makes it makes it so that we've got a good connection, and now we can take our measurement. 